I'm joined today by UFC heavyweight Parker Porter. Parker, thanks for coming on, man. Thanks for sharing some of your time. How's everything going today? Can't complain, man. It's a good day. The weather's a little warmer here than it usually is, so I'm I'm loving it. And where are you now? Are you in Connecticut? Yeah. Yep. Okay. That's where I live. Because I'm in New Jersey. We got about it's like 49 degrees over here right now. Yeah, it's like 55 and sunny today. It's like weird, but it's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> but for this neck of the woods, we'll take that, right? Absolutely. Yeah, man. So I saw some of your videos on Instagram, man, where you were doing some Cairo, right? I'm actually really interested about that. How long have you been doing that? And, you know, as far as why you've been doing that, you've been getting like any benefits from it or anything? So I haven't been consistently doing uh, chiropractic, but I have used it before and I've gotten great results. I just haven't found anybody in the area that I can get to consistently with my schedule um, recently. Uh, and uh, the doctor that you see in the videos there, he hit me up when I was in Australia for the 284 card. He was like, hey, I'm available for my services, blah, blah, blah. And I was like, absolutely. Sign me up. Let's go. Nice, man. And so that was your first time before that Australia card. Yeah. Yeah. And as far as like, do you, do you get, what are sort of some of the stuff that you, that you benefit from it or if anything at all, like, is there anything, do you feel better from it? I feel like everything is just kind of put back into place. You know, we get so okay. banged up and we're constantly training this and you're doing strength and conditioning session one day and, and then following it up with pads or sparring or grappling or whatever it is. And you just, every little bit that I can get to help aid in my recovery. So I feel fresher, faster. I'll take it. So it's more so like a maintenance kind of thing, right? Like keep the body. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Keep everything in order. It's not really to fix anything, so to speak, as much as it is to make sure that if anything's a little out of place or give it, a, give it the upper hand on the recovery aspect of things. Yeah, for sure. I mean, I don't know much about that. So I was just curious, man, but thanks for giving me the little four one one on that. Yeah. Um, so I saw an interview of yours, man, you were, and I'm, I'm asking you about this cause it literally just happened. And I'm just curious to get your thoughts. Um, saw an interview of yours recently you spoke about the john jones fight at heavyweight uh since we are again just a few days passing now, i wanted to ask you as someone who's been in there with him as well did did it go according to plan like i saw you call it and you were pretty spot on with it man i feel like you called it right down the middle so it seems like you weren't surprised with what happened right no i mean i mean like he's he's a phenomenal you know like phenomenal fighter like nobody nobody can do what he does he's like on his own level it's insane uh, just to even be able to say that I've been in the ring with him before is, is, you know, early on in my career before he became who he, who he is now, uh, you know, it was my first loss ever. Um, yeah. So I, you know, I had a bitter taste in my mouth about it. I was like, oh, I'm going to get that one back. And then like watching him from a distance being in the UFC and I'm like, Man, I don't think I'm going to get that one back. And then it got to a point where I was like, I don't even want that one back. <laughs> I mean, it's a good you know, one like, to have, right? If it's going to be anyone, right. It might as well be the yeah. goat. Exactly. You know, I feel like almost everybody that he's fought can kind of erase that loss off the record. It doesn't really count. But um, yeah, man, he just like he's such a hard guy to prepare for. You know, everybody talks about fight IQ this fight IQ that the yeah. dude is like he it, he studies his opponents so thoroughly. It's like you he knows what you're going to do before you do it. And, you know, he just his wrestling is top notch. He's got a body type and a reach that you can no, almost nobody can emulate that to prepare for him. And it's just, he's a freak, man. He's, he's, he's the goat. He definitely is a freak. And the, the studying stuff and all that, I would double down on like, he really looked like he was locked in in terms of the study and everything this week too. You fought the guy back at world championship fighting in 2008 when you, I mean, it's almost impossible to predict he would do this. Right. But when you were in there with yeah. him and last question about John, um, when you were in there with him, would you, I mean, are you surprised that all this happened afterwards that he was able to obtain this much success or were you kind of like, ah, I thought he was pretty good. <laughs> no, I, I thought he was pretty good. And I, I actually remember talking to him after, after, after the show, like backstage and, you know, we were getting changed after the fight and stuff. And, and I, I got a picture with him and I was like, I'm like, you're going to, you're going to do amazing things with this sport. I like, I called it that back in 2008, you know, I was like, you're going to, I don't know if he remembers that, but I vividly remember being like, you're going to go really far with this, you know, stay, stay, stay after it. You're, you're incredibly talented. Incredible, man. That's wow. That's quite the story. Yeah. So listen, as far as 
watching fights right did you kind of just watch because it was jones or do you like watching fights when you're not in when you're not preparing when you're not in camp like do you are you a vivid fan of the sport i do like to watch the fights i watch them more for um you know like studying and, and and brainstorming ideas and keeping up with everything than i do for just pure pleasure i mean i do enjoy watching them but i i, I have a little bit more of a purpose and then i'm always of course dialed into specifically the heavyweight bouts and stuff anytime there's a couple of heavyweights on the card that could potentially be opponents at some point in the near future i'm like you know right. really zoned in trying to see what's going on yeah and listen from what i saw in your last fight was it the first it was what it was it was the first time fighting out of the ufc apex right so yeah. i gotta ask you two questions when you come out to a crowd like that for the first time in the ufc right was it kind of like I guess what I want to ask is, do you feel like you've sort of been deprived of the UFC experience, if you will, in your first few, like three, four fights? And then like when it finally came time, you came out to that huge car, you're like, wow, this is what it feels like to be on a big stage or not at all. Like, do you feel like it was finally like in your last fight, you can finally say, wow, this is a big UFC stage? Because, you know, it could almost be a little, it might not feel that way when you're at the apex and due to certain circumstances, we had the pandemic, right? Like, what, what do you think about that? No, and they 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 do a great job of performing at the at the Apex. Everything's super super organized, super yeah. professionally produced. You know, the, the staff there is amazing, and they do an awesome job. But it's just not what people think of when they think of the UFC. It's not you know like it's not a, a you know a sold out arena with ten thousand plus fans screaming and getting rowdy and cheering or booing, mm -hmm. whatever it is. There's just not that same kind of electricity. So when I got to walk out to that, I was like, yeah, like this, this is what I've been missing. I can't wait. You know, like, let's, let's go. Let's freaking go, man. For sure. And obviously speaking of the whole let's go stuff, did it give you any extra like juice to be fighting a guy who was a local guy? Maybe some of the crowd might be favoring him in the fight. Like, did it, does it give you a little bit extra motivation or did you sort of need all the motivation you needed for such a, again, big event like that? Um, it gives extra motivation. I'm definitely the kind of guy that feeds off the energy of the crowd. And I do my best to turn that into a positive for me, whether they're cheering for me or booing for me. And, uh, I really didn't get any booze coming out. The crowd there was amazing. Everybody was super really? welcoming. And yeah, it was awesome. I had a great time in Australia and I really appreciate the fans over there. Uh, obviously the fight didn't go my way. Uh, you know, made one little mistake. And unfortunately a heavyweight, that's all it takes is one little mistake and cost you the whole situation. But, um, my only regret is that I wish I got a chance to perform more, you know? Yeah, for sure. Right. Did, so when you were actually in there on your feet in the octagon, actually performing, did it feel, it felt special then in front of being in front of a crowd like that? Uh, or were you more it's, so it's just kind of hard to say, fight? I'm really just kind of focused on the fight. When you get in there, it's, it's, it's really kind of like, almost kind of trippy you get in there the, everything's dark outside the cage so you really can't see too much past the cage so it's not like you're kind of awestruck by seeing this giant crowd in the middle of like slipping a punch or or you know like throwing a, a kick or whatever it is um you really just kind of like tunnel visioned in as it is it's like you're in opponent. a bubble almost yeah yeah so it wasn't it wasn't a distraction but you could hear the roar of the crowd and everything and that that's just fuel you know like that that drives it you know i don't know about other fighters but me personally that just drives me and speaking of the fight right losses a lot of times could be great learning lessons is there anything any important takeaways that you were able to take from this fight as you look back in hindsight that you feel like could help you in the future yeah we're gonna go back to working on some of my footwork with the boxing and stuff specifically on, on uh just little tweaks with the uh, foot positions and not overreaching and uh you know i've got a habit of of throwing my overhand right and really overreaching so it's it it touches and it, it lands but it doesn't have the same kind of power that it should have um and it 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 makes it difficult for me to follow up with my my footwork and chase it down if it does land so to add in combination so we're going back to working on that staying over our feet and really the power is there and i just need to transfer that over so we're focusing on that right now so aside from tweaking some of those things, right, last couple fights maybe weren't the results you wanted, but you've also been fighting really tough guys from what I saw on the record. Do you think, what do you think rather is the key to sort of getting that momentum back that you once had? You you know, you had a three fight win streak, everything was going well, you had some, again, some good momentum. What do you think are some of the keys to sort of getting you back to those moments? Um, 
I mean, like I said, working, tweaking the boxing a little bit, you know, and just getting back in the win column is really that, that, that's where the momentum starts. That's where the, the little snowball starts and you start rolling it down the hill into a bigger ball, bigger and bigger and bigger. Uh, and then you really just kind of run with it and you get your groove going. Um, so I, I don't think there's any one particular angle or target to work on other than, you know, okay. the things that we, we targeted from the, the last fight and the fight before. Okay. So that pretty much dials it all down, right? The uh, just improving from the stuff of the last fight moving forward again, because a lot of times the L's could be lessons, right? So I'm glad to see you yeah. sort of learning from it, man, for sure. And yeah. you said they're yourself, not always fun lessons. They're not always fun lessons, but they're lessons nonetheless. <laughs> right. And it's something I would never know about because, you know, I mean, I would only dream about being a fighter in the UFC video game. So um, <laughs> you said yourself, man, that you're not young, but to me, honestly, 37 at heavyweight, it's not too old for me. I mean, you know, maybe I'm just speaking as a fan here. Do you feel like being at a weight class like this one can offer you a few extra years or no? Absolutely. Yeah. And I, I think that's, I, I think you see a lot of heavyweights seem to hit their prime in a later, later age than most of the lighter weight classes do. Um, and they, they just in general seem to have longer careers overall. I think that's really in part due to the weight cutting, um, you know, you could get down to, you could start arguing, arguing all the semantics of everything as far as like, Oh, you know, like heavyweights, you know, it's usually like a one punch knockout. So they're not taking as many blows to the head. So they have longer careers and this and that, yeah. you know, I, I don't know. I'm just, I'm whatever it is. I'm happy that I'm a heavyweight and I'm very fortunate and, and thankful that it gives me the opportunity to do this a little bit longer. Than most people would be able to. And do you even like think of the window that you have left or do you, or, do, or is it all just like focused on now? Like, do you at all even like entertain like later years? I mean, I know you opened up a gym, right? You said you wanted to sort of prepare for life outside of being a fighter, which I think is very smart. Um, But besides that, do you sort of look ahead or not at all? I do only in the sense that like it puts a little more urgency on me and motivates me to, 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 you know, make sure that I'm, I stay working, you know, obviously every, yeah every guy at this level is like, well, there's no days off or there's no this or no that, but occasionally like you might have an injury or you might be like, have had a, a seriously hard training day the day before where you're going to go a little bit lighter than on the next day or, or maybe even take the whole day off from training to recover. Yeah. Um, but that, you know, like keeping in mind, like my idea of like my window is going to close around this age um, just keeps me motivated and fired up and really running on all cylinders to to get in there and get after it and not waste any time now I, from what i've heard you say you said fighting in the ufc was a goal for you right now that you're yeah. here is it is the goal just like stay here and thrive or do you have any sort of any other goals right when you look at it from like a, a macro perspective do you have any goals you want to accomplish while you're still here or do you feel like you've already accomplished what you wanted to just being here and now you're just focused on that so I was, I was so hyper-focused on just that being the one goal is getting to the UFC. And now, you know, like the, the next goal after getting there was like, all right, rack up a couple of wins and, and, you know, start making some noise. Then the next goal was to, you know, I'm, I'm looking to try and get a number to my name. I want to get ranked, um, you know, but then being the longer I'm in the UFC, there's all these other little kind of, smaller, you know, step goals that come up to me, like, Oh, I want to, I want to get a main event fight. I want to get, um, you know, I want to get my, myself in the video game. I want to get all this, all those little extra things that you're like, that would be awesome to be able to check that off on my bucket list and like put that on my resume, so to speak. And, and just be like, yeah, you know, like tell my kids when they're, you know, a couple of years from now, be like, Hey, you know, your dad's in a video game, right. You know, so when they're like 22 <laughs> yeah. years old, be like, I was cool once, you know, oh, it was yeah. really cool. <laughs> yeah i mean that's probably the coolest thing you could say right i was in a video game i don't think it gets any yeah. cooler than that and it's very possible i mean me personally just to go off on a little tangent i don't know why all the ranked fighters aren't in the game i think it's so stupid but hopefully by the time you get to there you get ranked they'll start putting the ranked fighters in the game they won't be done with that anymore so that's the plan man that's the plan that's it all right so i gotta ask you um ufc man it's uh or rather I want to ask you this before I get to that question. Do you feel like sure. you want to get in there anytime soon? Like maybe is it safe to say one more fight this year, a couple more? I want to. Yeah. The goal is to get at least two more, if not 
more than that. You know, it all, all, all these kind of changes depending on, you know, how a fight goes, if there's any injuries after a fight, whatever I need to tweak from one fight to the next. But uh, my, my baseline average that I'm looking to maintain is at least three fights a year. Okay. I like that, man. Nice and active. Um, and this is what I was going to ask you before that. Um, UFC is coming to Newark, New Jersey. I'm sure you just found out a few days ago. Now, obviously, I'm not putting any pressure. I did. I'm just curious. Like, would you entertain that? Because I also heard you say in a past interview that, you know, it would be cool to fight at MSG, maybe in Connecticut, Mohegan Sun. How about Newark, Some New Jersey? Somewhere closer to home. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's not too far. You know, it's only about four or five hours for drive from here. Okay, it's a little farther than I thought. I'm not going to lie. but uh, Yeah, okay. I mean, it's not terrible. But, like, no, people not terrible make at that all. drive. You know, they'd be yeah. like, we're going to get a hotel. You know, like, we're going to. We're going to get a hotel in New York, you know, it's just, absolutely. For sure. Um, Now, outside of the fighting, I want to ask you a couple more questions here as we wrap up. I know, and we touched on this already, I know that you opened up a gym, right? How much are you enjoying that process, if at all? And has it been easy to sort of juggle the time between doing the gym, being a dad, right, being a fighter? Like, how has it been to just sort of juggle all that, just as a human being? What's that like? Is it is it hard or have you that, found the good balance? It's tough, man. I'm still working on getting, you know, I, I've got a, as good of a balance as I can have. So I'm not officially losing my mind, okay. but there's days where I That's feel like I am. Um, and, you know, you, you want to like, these are all things that you, you, I'm passionate about, you know, like obviously I, my kids are the most important thing in the world to me, you know, you know, running the gym, I, I have a genuine passion for teaching people the martial arts and stuff like that. Um, and then being a, a coach to up and coming fighters, I want to be able to be there for them as much, if not more than I've had coaches there for me over the years. So then also balancing that out with my own training sessions and time away and stuff like that. That's where it gets a little tricky. So I am looking forward to when, you know, like my competitive days are done and I can give that a little more of my undivided attention, but I'm, that's not in any way, shape or form me and saying I'm, I'm ready to hang it up anytime soon. <laughs> right for sure man yeah it seems like the folk i mean you're obviously in the ufc you want to do as much as you can while you're here i totally get that um but you look at a fighter like michael chandler who's in the ultimate fighter now something you're quite familiar with um yep. michael chandler said that he's not really interested in being a coach right it's he's sort of just doing it for the experience but that's something you are very much interested in right when did you yeah. realize in your career like yeah i'd like to be a coach someday i think that'd be very fun or enjoyable uh so I, I started coaching a couple of years before I got called up to the UFC okay. and I, w I was nervous as hell about it. The first time I ever actually taught somebody, I'm like, you want me, I'm, I'm the expert now. <laughs> and then like doing it more and like realizing how much I actually do know about, about things. I mean, I'd always be able to do the things that I know that I should do, but I, I, I know how people should be doing them. Um, and to be able to teach people that from, whether it's it's somebody who has no experience whatsoever, they're completely blank slate and and building them up and, and seeing it like click for them. Like, oh, you know, like I can actually move my head and throw combinations. Like, all right, I, you know, I know how to do this sweep in jujitsu. I know how to throw this scissor sweep or I can hit this single or this double leg takedown and see it actually click for them and how much enjoyment they get out of it. That makes it like, that's worth every bit of time and effort and energy for me. Um, I get a, I get a lot of pleasure out of seeing that happen. And then of course, you know, like I'm just early on in my head coach career as, as somebody, you know, like actually getting fighters into competitions locally and stuff, but that's, you know, I'm already getting a big, big piece of enjoyment and, and energy out of that. You know, it keeps me alive. It keeps me focused and it keeps me involved with the sport and makes me love it even more to see these guys succeed. So yeah, sure. it's just uh yeah, it's something that I've always had, I think, like a passion for and something that I've always wanted to do. Now, maybe these aren't things that are at the forefront right now. I'm sure, you you know, you sort of focused on, again, the UFC run and all that. But as far as the gym, what are some of the things you plan on providing for somebody that wanted to join? Somebody that was curious, like, are you, is there anything you maybe want to do differently or something you want to really emphasize that you've learned and taken from your practices? Like, what are the, some of the things you plan on providing for people just overall? It doesn't have anything specific. I mean, we, we're, we're definitely more geared towards MMA. We have the class structure set up so that you can get four days a week of grappling, two, two, two jujitsu with the gi and two with no gi, two MMA days, and then uh, two Muay Thai days. The reason there's so many more uh, grappling days is because a lot of people that are involved know that you could learn pretty competent striking in a pretty short window of time. 
but you're not going to become a black belt in jujitsu in you know less than a year so that's why there's so much more with that and i, I think the, the biggest thing that i want to provide to people is is um the more the attention to detail kind of I, I might even actually cap the classes at a certain point when they they reach a certain limit so that i can make sure that the the quality of instruction that they're getting is there uh the attention to detail is there and and really also too for for people that have no idea or like are super intimidated about the idea of even trying to do this stuff, making it a much more welcoming and like friendly and, and atmosphere. Uh, you know, like a lot of people have this, this preconceived notion that you walk into a fighter's gym and it's all like, like back in like, um, was it Rocky, Rocky three when Apollo Creed walks into the gym and there's just guys are in there just staring and just ready to like rip Cobra Kai the <laughs> boxing gym. Yeah. Like a Cobra Kai thing where you know, everybody's just beating the shit out of each other. And if you don't at least know some basic stuff, you're going to get beat up. And it's, it's for everyone, man. Like, I think everybody should train martial arts. Not everybody's a competitor. Not everybody's a fighter by nature. But as far as like training, doing jujitsu, doing wrestling, doing uh, boxing and Muay Thai, that shit's fun, man. And like, it taught me a, a huge level of self-discipline and it became a huge uh, stress relief for me and just obviously the general health aspects you get from being in shape and in, in good enough shape to fight you know um there's there's that going with it as well but like like i myself got into this with no intentions whatsoever of actually competing never mind making a, a lifelong career out of it really so yeah i i want to i want to show people that like you could do that you just because you know how to fight doesn't mean you have to compete you know, like if you want to come in and you're just a hobbyist, you can get real sharp. We're going to make you just as sharp. If you, but if, it's up to you if you want to do something with it or not. Yeah, absolutely. That was a great answer, man. I love the insight you just gave there. I'm glad I asked that. And uh, yeah, thank man, you. that's going to do it. Uh, Parker, thanks for stopping by, man. I know you got a lot of stuff to do. You got the basketball games coming up. Enjoy being a father. Enjoy... Yeah, man, absolutely. So we're going to leave you to that. Um, we wish you and the family well, and uh, we're excited to see what lies in your future. Thank you, man. Appreciate it.